you could change one thing about Clark College to make it an inclusive environment for you, what would that be? More, um, what is it called? Gender neutral. Gender neutral bathrooms. Um, for me, it's a very big fear to go to the bathrooms and I actually end up sometimes holding whatever I need to do from the time I get here until the time I leave, and that could be from 8 in the morning to 6 p.m. Um, and that is not good for my health, first of all. But there's two different fears. The first, um, and that goes to going to every either or bathroom. Sometimes I have to walk from Bauer Hall all the way up to here just to find a general neutral bathroom, or a bathroom that's just one stall. Um, because I have the fear of if I'm dressed feminine and I go into the guy's bathroom, what can happen to me, either physically or verbally, um, or if I go into the female bathroom, there's, there could also be that person that's gonna be like, you're still a guy, you shouldn't be in here. And I could still get in trouble. Uh, you know, I could still go to jail, I could still, that, that's, that still happens. So for me, that more around, you know, on all the halls, that'd be wonderful for me. And I know that's wonderful for all the people too. Um, just cause I, I don't wanna be hurt, and I don't wanna be, um, scared of coming here because I want to learn. That's what I'm here for, but I don't want to have to think about every single time I take a step or every single time I have to go to the bathroom. I was going to say the exact same thing. Because <laughs> there's only one gender neutral bathroom in St. Geyser, so <coughs> I would just have to walk there from like, you know, Bayer Hall, if that's where my classroom's at. I just have to walk. And I believe that there's one in um, Hannah Hall, but it says women on it, but it's like a single stall. And I just never understood why it's not gender neutral anyway. Because I transitioned on campus, so I had that. So when I first started going, I was okay using the women's bathroom. And then it got to this point where like, <clears throat> like people would look at me and so I was like, yeah, I just can't. I just have to, I had to use gender neutral ones for a long time. And now I'm at the point where now I can, I can use men, um, the men's bathroom now. And that, so it's not, it's fine for me, but like during that transition phase, it, it was just really, really um, like a source of anxiety like all day long I have to think of, I have to plan out, I can't have 10 minutes between my classes because I don't have enough time to walk to the bathroom in Geyser Hall if I needed to use it during my break. Can I add actually, um, there was a student that um, decided not to come but they had told me that they schedule their classes around the bathrooms and so um, it's not their choice of a class but it's because they knew that they would have to use the restroom around the time that they actually schedule where their classroom is because there isn't any really gender neutral bathrooms towards the, the end of the campus. And there are some, but they're more faculty. So they actually have to go up to an, and ask a faculty member to let them in, and that's even scarier. transgender and questioning and queer in general here on campus but like even with the queer penguins and allies club we haven't been brought together like we don't have any like diverse events really like we had one that was like what's your QPA or something but that was like once in like the few years I've been here and I'm like well I feel like there should be more things happening to like bring us all together and make sure we know each other know like hey I know that person is safe to be around like because I know that they have similar experiences or know what I've been through or anything like that like it'd be good to be able to have an event where we could all be safe and meet each other like once a quarter or something I don't know and then another thing would be to have more faculty that are are in our like queer group, <laughs> like to see people that like aren't afraid to be who they are, like we aren't as a faculty or staff position and. Like, so we know we have someone to talk to. Like, like maybe, like a dean or something? Maybe knowing, like, that we have a specific dean 
or someone to talk to. Like, I don't really know of many people on campus that are in higher positions of faculty and staff that I can really go talk to except for Felice and Mary Lynn. That's a really short list. <laughs> <laughs> so I would like to see more representation of our community. That might also be a fear of faculty and staff to want to be outed too, because that's probably another fear just as much as you all have being in the classroom and having to out and same thing as with faculty and staff. So this is really a scary thing to do, but I am an interim dean and I am married to a transgender and um, you can always come knock on my door. Serious and Rosal as well. Okay, uh, <laughs> we love our he, he works. He sort of works in my office. So I hope I'm on that list. I mean, we love you. That you know that I guess a bit. I don't mean to like put you guys down again, but um, that still is a very short list. That still is a very very short list of the people that we know. Now, um, after, being here, after being here, I've been here three years, and it's, it's, and first of all, I mean, the first year, the only person I knew was her, and gradually, between three years, that's when I met these people, and three years is a long time for me to meet, what, ten people, um, for me to feel safe. Um, at night, sometimes, for example, and this is, I really, really, really want this here, not just for myself, but for future students, I really want lights in the middle, right there. I used to have an eight o'clock class, and I used to walk home, and that was the scariest part. I actually walked all the way around Clark, where all the lights were, for me to go to the other side of Clark, because I did not like that. Whether I was present as a male or a female, I, I, I just couldn't do it. Um, so I stopped taking those classes. Um, and the scarier part was in about the daylight, um, I almost had an encounter here. I was just walking with my partner um, and I mean I know that we can't have so much you know, security in every single corner. It's just like I would like to see them more often <laughs> or around. Um, I was just walking and these guys from here, the Clark students, uh, yelled out the word faggot. And we're just like looked at each other and said okay and we just kept walking. They were driving. They stopped their car mid road and threatened to get out. A couple did. I honestly, I've never gotten beaten up, but I still, you know, feel that day coming sometimes. And I thought that was going to be the day. So, thank you again. And, you know, yeah. and I think that there are things that, um, like, lots of faculty and staff, like, little things can do to make it feel better. Like, I mean, the fact that we have this event right here happening, and the fact that there are so many people in this room, I mean, there's a lot more people that aren't in this room, but the, oh, the, but the fact that this many people are in the room shows me that at least, like, all of you here care a little bit to be here. And there are definitely little things that people, like, the faculty and staff can do, like, even, like, asking for people's pronouns and remembering what their pronouns are, or remembering what name they go by, all those little things, like, you don't have to be, like, a queer faculty or staff, you don't have to be, like, but all those little things, people are going to remember that your teacher that was that, was, that made you feel, you know, safer, and you would take classes with that teacher, and then we're looking around too, and then other people that that's the teacher that's accepting. Well, we
would you tell a prospective student from a marginalized uh, background about what to expect at Clark? Please feel free to share um, thoughts about both positive and negative. Pretty much every student I talk to, I'm like, oh, you're taking English? Take Mary Lynn. <laughs> yeah. I try to always get my friends that are queer into her class because I know that they're going to be safe there because I was safe there. And um, what was the other part? Um, one of the things is, if you're going to take night classes, have a buddy, at least one, to like walk you to your car and park next to each other. Um, and, and that's just like for everyone though. Like, make sure that you have someone. And if you don't call security, I'm pretty sure they'll give you like, like a walk from the class. Um, and another thing I would probably say from being from California to coming here, um, it's a lot different. <laughs> it's a lot, a lot less diverse. Like there isn't a lot of other people around that are going to be either people of color or queer, unless you go out to the places and find them like into clubs, or triple point, or like, wherever. Um, yeah, pretty much along what you said is I would, I have a, like a list of all the teachers' names, I just remember their names if I felt like they were accepting, but I would also keep their expectations like realistic, like I would tell them about the lack of diversity and the lack of like queer content in the curriculum so that they don't have to get disappointed, you know, because when I took psych I was like really excited and then really disappointed when it didn't mention that. So I would keep their expectations like realistic and just telling them the positive and negative and also the, there is a huge lack of diversity here at Clark I would say, especially now that I go to PSU, which is like I go to PSU at the same time and go here and I, there's just especially even more drastic difference. So if you're coming from a place that's more diverse, that would that would be a, kind of like shocking too. Yeah. Um, first of all, you know, despite all the I might have been everything. I always tell people that I love this place because honest to, I do, I do. I love this place. I love a lot of the people that come here. Um, I love learning and I love what I learn here. Um, so that's the positive side that I always tell people is that you know what, you know, it is a good <coughs> school. It, you do learn a lot and you know, there's a lot of other things that you could do here. And, but you know, then I have to tell them, you know, where certain things are and how to get there and um, what help is there for you? Just because um, I know otherwise there's no, there's gonna be, there's not gonna be anybody who um, will. Me coming here the first day, um, and I'm okay saying this by the way. Um, I am a 1079 student. Anybody know what that is? Anyway, 1079. Everybody. Are you a dreamer? Okay. Um, I am a dreamer, and coming here, um, that's how I met Elise, but. Nobody, none of the faculty uh, knew what to do with me, honestly, because I had to go to her specifically and listen to how I was going to register to go to Clark. Um, and I was pushed from, because I was doing Renta Star, I was pushed from Linda's office to registration, back to Linda's office to um, where you pay cashiers to uh, down here. Financially. Financial aid back to Linda until finally it took me a week to apply here. Just to let you guys know um, until I got the, until I got went to release. So um, you know I always tell people I have the list. I have you know go to police. You should always go talk to police. Meet you know and Sirius and Rosalba because I know that those are the people that are that are gonna help. Um, and but you know the good and the bad kind of just. They, they kind of fight each other. I know there's a lot of professors here that, um, to the to them, this is just a job, and but to some of us, like us students, we want to be able to live, you know, and, 
and study and not have to plan our schedules because of the bathroom or who's gonna, you know, this person accepts and this is not, that shouldn't be how it is because nobody else that's cisgender or straight or um, whatever they have, they don't have to worry about that. I just wish I didn't have to worry about that either. Um, so I just think if we bring more of those professors in here, that would totally help. And then, then I could totally just tell people, you know what, Clark has no problems, just go there. You know, a lot of the professors are gonna be there and they're gonna be understanding, but I can't do that yet. 